The first playable Aetherian ship has just been announced by Star Trek Online, so let's take a look. Okay, so here is the first Aetherian ship that is going to be playable in Star Trek Online. They're calling it the Aetherian Revelation, and I mean, it looks cool. It's very pretty. It very much has that, you know, Aetherian, very, uh, very elegant aesthetic, very, you know, very, it's, it's very shiny and bright. You know, I'm into it. That said, I do still like the Harmony more, and I am a bit disappointed that that's not the ship that we're getting with this lockbox, but whatever. Which, yeah, spoiler alert there, this is going to be coming to the Infinity lockboxes on PC on May 28th, so that's tomorrow that'll be going live with the new update. Additionally, everything in the Prodigy lockboxes is now going to be added into the Infinity lockboxes on the same day. So yeah, this is another angle on the ship. Still not entirely sure which is the front and which is the back. It is pretty, though. Anyway, uh, apparently this is going to be a science vessel. It's going to have a commander level intel seat, so it's going to be an intel science vessel. But it's also going to have a lieutenant commander miracle worker seat on the universal seat. Ugh, I already don't like the sound of that miracle worker seat, but let's reserve judgment until we see the rest of the ship. So it's going to have a hull modifier of 1.525, which is very high, especially for a science ship. That's something I would normally expect to see unlike a dreadnought or something. Wow. Uh, shield modifier of 1.3, also very high. A 3-3 weapons layout, which very standard for a science vessel. Three device slots. Uh, the bridge officer seating is going to be a lieutenant level tactical, lieutenant commander engineering. That's not good. Uh, ensign level science, commander level science slash intel, and a lieutenant commander universal slash merrick worker. Already very unimpressed with that bridge officer seating. That is way too much engineering seating for a science vessel. And the merrick worker seating does not help it at all. It's got three tactical, three engineering, and five science consoles, a base turn rate of seven. That's also very low. So this is going to, I'm guessing this is going to be a rather large ship. I mean, it's hard to say the scale of the actual ship itself based on just these images. There's nothing to really compare it to. It could be really big or it could be really small, but either way, it's going to feel like a really big ship. It'll have an impulse modifier of 0.15, inertia of 60. Uh, so yeah, big slow ship. Whether or not it's actually a big ship is still hard to guess, but it'll feel like one. Uh, plus 22 auxiliary power, which I mean, that is exactly where you want your power levels on a science vessel. So, you know, points there. The, uh, the it'll, it'll have sensor analysis, subsystem targeting and a secondary deflector slot, which is obvious. It's a science vessel, so uh, that's a given. It'll also have the gather intel mechanic, which is a given, given that this has a uh, commander level intel seat. This is going to be a full intel ship. Uh, it'll also have its own console and trait, and it will have the science vessel mastery package, which comes with a small buff to exotic damage and a bunch of useless shield traits. No sign of a cloaking device, which is weird, given that this is a full intel ship. I mean, this isn't something they've always done in the past, but over the past couple of years, it's usually a guarantee that full intel ships do get at least a basic cloaking device. And given the uh, the highly advanced technological nature of the Ethereum ships, you would think a cloaking device, even just a standard one, would have been a given here. But nope. Oh, well. Moving on to the console, this is called Fractal Redirection Matrix. This mysterious Ethereum technology causes a cross-lattice network of energy relays to activate, redirecting incoming damage that impacts the ship's hull to a specialized series of weapon-like emitters uh, that line the hull. The energy redirected in this is then forcefully ejected to a designated enemy target, causing them to suffer a portion of damage uh, their allies attempted to deal to you. This console additionally provides passive buffs to threat generation while threatening stance is active and maximum hull capacity that scales with your auxiliary power. This console can be equipped on any ship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a universal console, so it can be equipped on anything. And we actually got some tooltip info. Uh, so this console will mark a target for 20 seconds. Uh, when you receive damage, you will redire redirect a pr uh, percentage of that damage to the marked foe as proton damage, the percentage of which will scale with your auxiliary power. And while it, the and while the console is active, you will gain plus 100 to all damage resistance rating. So it's it's a tanking console, but like a sciencey tanking console, which I guess is kind of interesting. I know science tank builds have come up, come up quite a way than they have been in the past. I still don't fully like understand how they're put together. I mean, EPG builds have never been my specialty, so science tank builds are even weirder to me. But I mean, it's interesting, but this is going to be the kind of thing that is going to appeal to a very niche section of the player base. I feel like most people really aren't going to be that interested in that, given that this is a very science focused tanking console rather than your typical already existing tanking consoles in the game, which, you know, are much more basic and direct than this kind of thing is. 
And the fact that it deals damage back to your enemy targets, that's not going to be great for support tanks because really you want your support, uh, you want your support guys doing as little damage as possible because, you know, for supported runs, you want uh, damage to be mainly dealt by the person that you are supporting. So, yeah, I, I this really isn't probably this probably isn't going to have much demand on, you know, the super high end, at least not for team runs. Maybe for solo play, this could be interesting. But again, it's going to be uh, it's going to have a very niche target audience, I think. The Starship trait is called Unity Shielding. Every few seconds, gain a charge of Unity Shielding that will increase your resilience against incoming dam incoming hull damage. This effect may stack several times and new charges refresh all existing charges. So as long as you have stacks of it, you will keep all of your existing stacks. But those stacks will be consumed with its effect. Uh, while you have at least one charge, attackers may be automatically held when they deal damage to your ship. If an enemy is held in this manner, it consumes one charge of unity shielding. Enemies held this way become immune to this effect for some time after. Double duration immunity for players, so you can't just repeatedly spam it onto the same enemy. The rate at which new charges are gained is influenced by your current auxiliary power. The info in the tooltip, uh, gain a charge of unity every few seconds, which speeds up with your auxiliary power, max of 10 charges. The fact that it just, you know, you just gain charges every few seconds, there's no wording in here to imply that you have to be in combat for those charges to stack or to start building up, because that's typically how Starship traits work. Most things, you have to actually be in combat for their effects to take place. But this, you just kind of have to have it slotted and it'll start building up. Though I guess that why, that's why it only stacks up to 10. But even then, that's a good amount of uh, good amount of stacks there. Each charge grants plus 10 all damage resistance rating up to, for up to 30 seconds. So you are going to be getting some tanking along with those uh, along with those charges. Uh, when taking damage, consume one charge and it'll hold the target. So yeah, it just holds the targets and then foes that are held uh, are immune after the few seconds. So you can't just spam it repeatedly. It's it's a weird trait. I mean, it's I mean, I'm trying not to be overly negative here, but at the same time, I'm already not pleased with what I've seen here. But this it's it sounds like a gimmick trait. I mean, the uh, the hold feature is kind of interesting, but I feel like you'd want more control over what you're or what you're holding you don't want those to just randomly apply every time an, an enemy attacks you you want your hold to be something like gravity well where you can gather everything into one place and then that way you can use aoe attacks on them but with these they'll just be held but then spread out everywhere there's also no information on how long the hold will apply or how strong it'll be and it's so it's it's difficult to say how effective that hold is going to be, but and you know, there is also the damage resistance rating here, but it's not a lot of damage resistance rating, especially given that you, these uh, stacks are probably going to be consumed rather quickly, um, given that they automatically trigger every time you're attacked by an enemy. Oh, here we go. Hold duration and immunity duration uh, both scale with your Starship Control expertise. So again, no real solid word on how long those last, but all we know is that the duration will scale with your uh, Control expertise skill, which I guess that's something. But again, some numbers would be nice. OK, so overall on this ship, it's really pretty. I'll give it that, but that's really all I can give it because like the ship stats alone, I mean, they're already not very impressive. It feels like it's going to be a large, bulky ship, which not always the best for science ships. I mean, if it's a, if it were a spearhead or a science dreadnought or something, that would be one thing. But this is just a standard science ship with this setup. So, I mean, that's kind of OK, I guess. But then you look at this bridge officer seating. Not only does it have a Lieutenant Commander America worker uh, seat, which offers very little to science builds. I mean, if it was a full miracle worker ship, at least it would have that extra console slot. But you're not getting that with secondary miracle worker. The fact that it's a full Intel ship, that is kind of nice. Intel is still pretty good for EPG. But then there is that Lieutenant Commander engineering seat. That is a lot of engineering seating for a science build. I guess the thinking here is that it's clearly meant to be a sort of science tank, you know, with the uh, the combination of this console and the Starship trait. So I guess the thinking is, oh, well, engineering, that's the tanking class. But that has never been the case. Engineering has some tanking aspects to it, but that's kind of true with science as well. But together, there's they're not a good combo together, science and engineering. So it's it's. That's too much on a science vessel like this. You really don't want anything more than just auxiliary power to uh, our emergency power to auxiliary. Hopefully they do a better job if they ever give us the harmony, because uh, this I'm not impressed with. I like the look of it. It is very pretty, but that's about all I like about it.
Especially considering this is a lockbox ship, too. This is going to be an expensive ship, so it's going to be expensive, single character unlock, and it's going to have uh, poor bridge officer seating, uh, a console that's going to have a very niche target audience, and a Starship trait that just doesn't seem all that impressive either. So, eh, not excited about it. So, yeah, that is the Ethereum Revelation. It is, um... It is a ship coming to Star Trek Online. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, like I said, it is it is a very pretty ship. I do like the look of it, but that's about all I like about it, unfortunately. Uh, the fact that it doesn't have great stats. It has a very niche target audience for its console. It's, the trade is pretty much as unimpressive as the sh as the ship stats themselves. And it's a lockbox ship, so it's going to be very expensive and it's going to be only available as a single character unlock, which is always super annoying and honestly has just gotten more and more annoying over the years, which is why I am, you know, constantly talking about it. But yeah, it's it's a cool looking ship, but practically wise, I don't think it's going to appeal to a lot of people because I, I know I'm not the biggest enthusiast of science ships. I'm, I'm not shy about that, but I, I feel like even people who are really into EPG builds, they're probably not going to be super impressed with this ship, though. If I'm wrong, feel free to tell me. Um, but yeah, that is the revelation. Uh, let me know what you think down below in the comments. And while you're down there, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can hit that join button to become a member or or uh, find the link to the merch store down below or use the affiliate codes for uh, the Epic Game Store or for real merch. If you're ever shopping at either of those, either of those locations, I can talk, shut up. <laughs> uh, using those does help me out, and I really do appreciate that. Uh, either way, though, thank you so much for watching. My name's Stu, and I will see you guys next time.